the news vendor model performance metrics. Once we choose an order quantity, for example, Q equals 4,186, the optimal quantity to order for our seasonal product. Um, in this case, we chose it using profit maximization objective, but we could have chosen it for other reasons, right? For this uh, quantity, this quantity can be evaluated in, uh, in terms of uh, several metrics that uh, might be interesting to us. The first three metrics will be expected lost sales, also called expected shortage, and then expected sales and expected leftover. Expected lost sales is an average value of lost sales. The actual lost sales might be uh, equal to zero whenever demand is less than the quantity. If demand is less than or equal to the quantity, we don't have any lost sales. Lost sales, actual lost sales, will be zero. And if you recall, because we chose this quantity such that the probability of being in stock is 80%, or probability of demand being this or less is 80%, then that means expected, uh, the, sorry, actual lost sales will be zero with probability 80%. But with the remaining 20%, the lost sales may be positive and they, you know, there could be all kinds of values, one, two, three, and 100 to 1,000 perhaps, uh, units of lost sales and more. And uh, so basically expected lost sales averages all those possible values um, for the normal distribution of the demand that we assume to have mean uh, given here and standard deviation also given here. Um, you can calculate it using this function. If you use other distributions than the normal distribution, there would be a different function, right? This is just for normally distributed demand and calculation in Excel. If you use this loss function, you, you can get, obtain the value of 131.84 units. It's important to keep this value fractional, uh, especially when the value is, is quite small. This is not that small, but sometimes we can get uh, expected lost sales of 5 or 15 units. And then make sure you keep the fraction because then in relative terms, this fractional part becomes a significant uh, part of the value. So in this case, uh, this is the value. And of course, I hope you realize that the average can be fractional even if the actual lost sales will always be integer, right? But an average of integer values may be fractional. For example, an average of one and two is one and a half. So um, we keep 1.5. We don't round it, even though the actual values could be only one or two. Now, once we get expected lost sales, this is actually the, the most difficult formula. The rest is relatively easy. The first thing to realize is that if you have a certain demand and you're saying some of that demand we didn't satisfy, some of it is lost sales, then the rest must be sales, right? So if I have 1,000, uh, let's say, units of demand and I, and I lost 100 units of sales, right? I, I, I didn't satisfy 100 of this 1,000, then the remaining 900 must be the sales. So the same formula will work for expectations. Expected sales plus expected lost sales will be equal to expected demand. And that actually tells us how we can calculate expected sales because we already have expected lost sales from here, right? So And we know the demand on average. So we can calculate expected sales here, right, as average demand minus expected lost sales. So it will be 3060.16. Again, I keep it fractional just to emphasize that these expectations may be fractional values, not necessarily here. It's actually quite large value, so rounding it wouldn't be a big error. Now, the second thing is if I know expected sales, I know also my quantity that I will order, 4,186 in this example, right? I know part of this quantity I will sell, and the rest will be the leftover inventory, right? So again, the same uh, logic will work on expectations, right? So I have this quantity, it's fixed. It's not an expected value. It's an exact value that I will order. Uh, part of this uh, will be expected sales. The remaining part will be expected leftover inventory. So, so from this, I can calculate expected leftover inventory as Q, minus expected sales, because now I know expected sales, I just calculated it. So expected leftover is Q, order quantity, minus expected sales, and that's in this example 1,125.84. 
Now, um, again, like we've expected lost sales, the important thing to realize with leftover is it's that there is a, a significant chance leftover will be zero. In fact, leftover will be zero whenever demand is uh, demand is uh, more or equal equal or more, higher than quantity. Right? If demand exceeds quantity or is exactly equal to quantity, I will have no leftover. I will actually have lost sales. Right? So in there's actually in, the, in our example twenty percent chance of that. So actual leftover. Not expect that actual value of leftover might be zero with probability 20%, but it might be positive and, uh, you know, all kinds of values, 1, 2, 3, 100, 1,000 and so on, much larger values are, are possible for the actual leftover with uh, appropriate probabilities. So this uh, value of expected leftover is the average of the zero of 20% and all kinds of other values with appropriate appropriate probabilities. We don't have to have a complex formula here because once we have expected lost sales, expected sales and expected late leftover can be calculated using straightforward um, additions or subtractions. The one important comment is that sometimes students are surprised how come I have both expected lost sales positive and expected leftover positive. So uh, remember, expectations are not actual values. They are averages of all, uh, probabilistic averages of all possible actual values. In fact, we will never have actual lost sales and actual leftover positive at the same time. It's always either, uh, right, either demand is higher than the quantity, then in this case we have lost sales, right, actual lost sales, right, but whatever the demand exceeds the quantity, we just uh, don't satisfy all the demand, we have lost sales, or demand is less than the quantity and then we have some leftover when the lost sales is zero. Right? So in one case, lost sales is positive, leftover is zero. In the other case, uh, lost sales is zero and leftover is positive. Of course, it is possible, although very unlikely, that demand will be exactly equal to quantity. In this case, both lost sales and leftover are zero. But it is not possible to have actual lost sales and leftover positive at the same time, right? But that's, that same logic doesn't apply to expectations. Expected values uh, are averages, uh, and uh, because both uh, lost sales may be positive and both leftover may be positive, uh, both lost sales may be zero or positive and leftover may be zero or positive, the average for uh, lost sales or expected lost sales is a number above zero, and the average of leftovers, uh, the expected leftover, is also higher than zero. Three other performance metrics that we can calculate are expected revenue, expected cost, and expected profit. Uh, revenue we collect for sales, right? Every time we sell something, we collect the price. And if we have some leftover inventory for those, we collect the salvage value, the $90, the discounted price. Cost, uh, actually, uh, we don't need to put the word expected in this example, right? We could say actual exact cost because uh, quantity is something we set. If we decide the quantity is 4,186, then the cost will be exactly Four hundred sixty thousand four hundred sixty dollars and not a dollar more or less. This is no longer random, right? Expected revenue, of course, depends on how much sales we will have and how much leftover, actual leftover. Uh, the actual revenue will depend on this. So expectation is necessary here. We can calculate now expected profit as the difference of those two earlier terms, right? So we get an expected profit of 222297 Another way to calculate expected profit is to, to look at profit per unit of expected sales. So if we expect to sell 3,060.16 units, each of them will bring $80 of profit. That's an expected profit, right? But you have to decrease this by the uh, loss that we experience for each unit of leftover or expected leftover. So we will decrease it by 20 times expected number of units of leftover inventory. And notice the value that we get here is exactly the same value of expected profit. I mean, this is the same profit, just calculated differently. It's very easy to show that actually these formulas are equivalent and one can be transformed uh, to the other if we 
if you use the other uh, formulas for expected sales leftover or um, or uh, ex expected sales uh, um, expected sales expected loss sales and expected le leftover relationships now one more uh, measure that we will introduce is maximum profit maximum profit uh, i should also probably add here expected maximum profit is the value that we could get if we had a perfect forecast so remember we're working with a forecast that has some standard deviation and actually quite large value of standard deviation compared to mean so because of this we get this expected profit but if we had um, a perfect forecast or perfect information or crystal ball you know that would tell us exactly what the demand would be if we knew for example the demand will be 5700 units we would set q equal 5700 units and we would satisfy exactly the demand without having any mismatch cost without right any mismatch so in that case uh, the expected value of the profit would be $255,360 can be calculated as price minus cost times the average demand. So an important detail here is that if we had perfect forecast before we, uh, right, we, we, we open this information, we find out what the actual forecast is, before we get it, we, we would know that this perfect forecast would tell us on average a value of mu and we would collect only the profit for those units because then we would order exactly the quantity that matches the demand, demand being on average mu, right? So here is just collecting the profit without uh, any costs for leftover uh, inventory. And notice, of course, this maximum profit is larger than the expected profit with our imperfect information. So uh, the difference is going to be called the mismatch cost, maximum ma minus expected profit. It is $33,064 in this case. Another way to calculate the mismatch cost would be to take the cost per unit of leftover inventory, multiply by expected number of uh, units uh, left over, and then cost of lost opportunity for expected lost sales, all the units of expected lost sales. And if you notice again, we get exactly the same value again, $33,064, because this is the same measure, just calculated differently. But again, one can show equivalence of this formula and this formula for this example. So mismatch cost is the maximum possible gain from improving the forecast, right? Mismatch is due to the difference between maximum profit and expected profit, right? And, um, and basically it tells us our imperfect forecast is costing us $33,064. If we could improve our forecasting, we could maybe shave off some of this, right? Turn this mismatch cost into expected profit, right? Increase expected profit and reduce the mismatch cost, right? But it also kind of tells us a limit. So if, for example, I could invest in much better forecasting system by paying $100,000, probably doesn't make sense, at least if it's a one-time investment for one product only and not a system implementation for multiple products, um, right? But uh, it wouldn't make sense um, for to just invest in this one forecasting exercise to, to $100,000 because the benefit from the improved forecast is at most $33,000. $1,064. If it is benefit, this is the benefit from improving our forecast to perfect forecast. So, right, and probably any forecasting will, will not be perfect. So, we could only gain part of that in reality. And of course, I hope you see that maximizing expected profit, if you maximize expected profit, you'll be also minimizing the mismatch cost, something I said earlier. One more. Uh, um, comment uh, or uh, that I want to discuss at the point at this point with performance metrics metrics is to look at the mismatch cost as a percentage of maximum profit or expected revenue. So this tells us kind of relatively how much of the potential profit we lost. In this example, it's a, almost thirteen percent. Um, when we choose the quantity, as we did here, order quantity in order to maximize expected profit, this percentage will be large if uh, we have a high coefficient of variation, 
which is actually the case here, the larger coefficient of variation, which is sigma over mu, the, the, the larger the per, this percentage will be. But also when critical ratio is small, uh, so it actually is not a case in our example. In our example, the critical ratio was 0 0.8. It was uh, much higher than half. But if we had critical ratio that is uh, very small, like 0 0.2, 0 0.1, then this uh, mismatch cost as a percentage of maximum profit would be much larger value, right? And of course, mis uh, the mismatch, uh, sorry, the critical ratio is small when CU is relatively low to compare to CO. Right? In our case, CU was 80 and CO was 20, but if CU was much lower than CO, then then, then um, mismatch cost as a percentage of maximum profit would be much larger. It can be 60, 70, 80 percent even. And another uh, view is to look at mismatch cost as percentage of expected revenue. Right? We calculated revenue earlier. Uh, so in this case, it's almost 5 percent. And the interesting why this is important is because uh, let's say if we are selling right these products in some uh, retail uh, stores, then uh, we have to realize that in the industry, in the retail, often uh, net margins are uh, in the range of two to five percent. So having something uh, like a mismatch cost, which is actually reducing our profits, something that is of an order of five percent of uh, total revenue. Uh, that is quite significant. If we could reduce this mismatch cost to from five percent to three to one percent, we would, um, you know, maybe double our net profits, um, right? From two, three, four percent to um, four or six or eight percent, right? So this is quite a significant um, value, and it is something that indicates that we could have. Uh, we could work on some improvements to reduce the mismatch cost and improve profitability of uh, of our uh, retail operation.